Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kermit's Ghost. It is Monday, the 28th of August, 2023, which happens to be a bank holiday. I'm on my way to HMV in just a moment because it is a Blu-ray release Monday, and there should be a lot of titles on the shelves because a few were pushed back from last week. I've also got a film to show you from Magpie Movies. He sent me a movie over, and I will show that at the end. There should be a TV show and maybe three or four films as well. I'm going to go and grab a coffee from Costa because I need that morning caffeine. And then we'll go into HMV and see what's out. I'll see you all up there in a moment. Okay, so the first one to show you is Double Impact. This is an action thriller from 1991, littered with martial arts. This Jean-Claude Van Damme release is limited to 3,000 copies, has an 18 certificate and is priced at 19.99. Next is Jagged Edge from the Indicator label. This is a crime mystery thriller from 1985. This one stars Jeff Bridges and Glenn Close. It's got a runtime 108 minutes and is priced at 11.99. So next we have The Flash. This is the ninth and final season. It's from Warner Brothers. This is Grant Gustin return for the last time as The Flash. 13 episodes in this season and it will set you back 29.99. It's got a runtime this one of 549 minutes. Or you could pick up the complete TV show in one neat but large box. This ran from 2014 to 2023. There are nine seasons in total. Carries a 15 certificate because of season five. This will set you back £70, which is under £8 per season. The next film to show you is War Pony. It's on Picture House Entertainment. This is a drama from last year about two young men that are growing up on the Pine Ridge Reservation. This one will set you back £12.99. The next one to show you is Boogie Nights. This is a cine edition exclusive to HMV, limited to 1,500 copies. With this, you get art cards, poster and exclusive bonus materials, and this will cost you £24.99. The next film is an action drama called The Postman Fights Back. It's an 88 films release, has two cuts of the movie with a runtime of 87 minutes. This will set you back 16 99 It comes with a 15 certificate. Taxi Hunter next, again from 88 Films. This is a crime drama from 1993 and it's about a man getting revenge on bad taxi drivers after his pregnant wife is run over by one. This will set you back 16 99 so next we have McVicar, the breakout edition from Fabulous Films. This drama is from 1980. It stars Roger Daltrey, Adam Faith, Cheryl Campbell and Stephen Burkhoff. This edition comes with a poster by Looks of Things and will set you back 19.99. Next is Bel Air Season 1. Now, I've not watched this but it does seem like an unnecessary reboot of The Fresh Prince. This will set you back 36.99 which is £12 due on Amazon so I wouldn't bother either way. So next is Hacks Season 1. It's a comedy drama from 2021. They have made two seasons with a third one greenlit. This one stars Gene Smart. Again, £36.99, but it's £24.99 on Amazon. That is not good stuff, HMV. Next is Time Bandits on 4K, released through Arrow. This is a limited edition, and this includes a booklet and a double-sided poster with a map on one side, original theatrical artwork on the other. This is going to set you back £21.99. Next is the standard release of Scum. This is on the Indicator label. This 1979 Alan Clark directed crime drama is Ray Winston's best movie, in my opinion. This will set you back £11.99, worth every penny. Another Indicator release. This time they made me a fugitive. This 1947 film noir stars Trevor Howard and Sally Gray. This can set you back £11.99 and this is region free. The Thomas Crane Affair next from 88 Films. This romantic crime thriller stars Piers Brosnan, Rene Rosso and Dennis Leary. This comes with a really nice slip cover and will set you back £16.99. It carries a 15 certificate. So we have another indicator title, this time Crime Wave from 1985. There are four cuts to this Sam Raimi movie. It stars Bruce Campbell and Brian James. This one's going to set you back just £11.99. And here we have Bellman and True, again from Indicator Films, directed by Richard Longcrane, and this stars Bernard Hill, and this is a heist movie from 1987. There are two cuts to this film, it's going to cost you £11.99. 
So the last one in the new releases is Teen Wolf 1 and 2. The first one's from 1985 and the sequel from 1987. I've not seen the Jason Bateman follow-up. Is it any good? This one's going to set you back 24 99 Hey everybody, welcome back. So there's five titles to get through, so let's crack on with it. Okay, I'm going to start off with Flash at Season 9. This is the final season, rounding off the story in the show. I'm not going to go actually into the storyline because at this stage of the show, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's going to sound confusing and pointless. And if you have been watching it, then you know what it's about anyway. And this aired in February in the United States, March in the UK of this year. And this season's got a lot of time traveling, characters returning, alternate realities, loopholes closed, evil villains, and of course, an epic showdown. 13 episodes in total in this season, given an overall count of 184 episodes from start to finish. As I've mentioned before whilst picking up previous seasons, that this crosses over into other DC shows. You've got Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow and Batwoman, and this season is no exception. So expect a few characters to show up here and there. Even Grilla Grodd returns in this season in the episode The Mask of the Red Death. So anyway, I didn't want to talk about individual episodes. So all I'm going to say is I'm going to conclude by saying it's got a runtime of 549 minutes take a look inside so the slip case and the cover have the same image there are three discs and an episode listing on the reverse of the cover so that was the flash the ninth and final season Okay, next is a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie from 1991, 1992 in the UK called Double Impact. Limited release from 88 films, limited to 3,000 copies. Directed by Sheldon Lettish, who has worked with Van Damme before on AWOL, which was called Lionheart in the United States. And he also co-wrote the screenplays for both Bloodsport and Legionnaire. This stars Van Damme and Van Damme. Yes, he's playing two parts in this, as he does later in Maximum Risk, and then as a clone Van Damme in Replicant, and also a little bit later, a younger version of himself in Time Cop. Anyway, in this, he's playing both Alex Ragnar and his twin, Chad, who are separated at a very young age. Their parents are killed by Moon, played by Bolo Young, and he's also worked with Van Damme before as well on Bloodsport. Alex is kept in Hong Kong, whereas Chad's taken to France, leading to two very different childhoods. Cut to a quarter century later, Chad's now in LA, but he travels to Hong Kong, and he's then mistaken for his twin. Cut a long story short, they've got a team up getting over their differences and get revenge of their parents' deaths. Also stars Jeffrey Lewis as Frank. He's the guardian and business partner of Chad. Now the effects in this are a little bit ropey to say the least, but given it's 32 years old now, you can forgive it. It's got a runtime 110 minutes. Let's take a look inside. So the slip cover and the cover have the same image. That image has been carried onto the disc. There are four art cards. There's a single sided poster and a screenshot from the film on the reverse of the cover. So that was a limited edition release of Double Impact. Okay, next film was very kindly sent to me by Paul over at Magpie Movies. It's a film that he was sent to review on his channel, which he did. Wasn't really to his liking, so he asked if I would like to have it, which was very kind of him. Now, this arrived last Monday as I finished filming last week's video. I have opened it because I wanted to watch it ready for today's video. And there was a note inside, so I'll read that, but first, I will put a link to Magpie Movies channel down in the description. Be sure to check him out. So there it is. It says a Magpie memoir. I'll put a picture of the notes up in the corner so you can read along with me. It says, hi, Alan. Apologies for the delay in posting this to you. You don't have to apologize. You're doing me the favor. Take your time. If you're going to give me something for free, don't put yourself out. I just appreciate it. As you may know, I was sent this movie from Signature Entertainment, but it's not the best. So as you don't have it, here it is. Okay, hope you and the family are well. They are, thank you very much. And I hope you, your wife and daughters are fine as well. I look forward to your history lesson in Newcastle if you ever head up to my neck of the woods. I've never been to Newcastle. That's somewhere I will have to visit. Take care, my friend, Paul. So thank you very much. I will put this inside the case and I will talk about the film now. So the film Paul sent me is The Black Demon. It's a creature feature action thriller from this year, directed by Adrian Grunberg, and he brought us Get the Gringo and Rambo Last Blood. It stars a very underrated actor called Josh Lucas. Always reminded me of a less successful Kevin Costner, and coincidentally does star in Yellowstone as a younger John Dutton, which is Kevin Costner's character, in case you don't know. 
In this, he is playing a character called Paul Sturgis, who travels to Baja with his wife and two children as a combined vacation business trip. And upon his arrival, he leaves his family at the local hotel. He catches a little boat to the oil rig to see if it's worth saving or to be scrapped. He's brought his family along because he always remembers this little fishing village as being very friendly, very beautiful, but since then it's become a bit of a ghost town and the remaining residents are a little bit less than hospitable. Now Paul's wife and children are at the hotel bar and they're intimidated by local thugs and they've got no choice but to join Paul on the rig. However, the boat over to the rig reveals that there's a Megalodon, aka the Black Demon, circling the surrounding waters, eating anything and everything in its path. Now, they barely get off the boat alive and they find the oil rig is all but deserted apart from two remaining crew members and their dog. So it becomes a film of survival and there's also a subplot about Paul and this corrupt oil company. I'm not going to say any more on that, but I will say that this has so much potential. A group of people stuck on a rundown, sinking oil rig with a huge predator lurking at every turn. I'm guessing the budget wasn't as big as you rarely see the beast, and when you do, it does look a little bit unrealistic. And as a result of that, tension is never really palpable. It's got a runtime of one hour, 40 minutes, and not the 104 minutes it says on the back. Let's take a look inside. So the front cover image has been put onto the disc. So that was The Black Demon. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate you sending me this. I've got a feeling this will be better on repeated viewings. You, mate, are a star. Okay, next one is Capricorn One. It's a thriller from 1977, written and directed by Peter Hyams, who directed Hanover Street and The Poseidon, amongst others. And it's got a very good cast and a very good story. And this film starts off with a rocket on the launch pad ready to take off to Mars. The crew, they're all strapped in in a cockpit, and suddenly they're removed by a government official, much to their annoyance, and flown away on a private jet. Meanwhile, no one in launch command or any of the hundreds of observers in the stands are aware that this has happened. The rocket then takes off without any crew at all and no one's the wiser. Now the astronauts are flown to a secure location and they're still in the dark as to what's going on as well. It stars James Brolin as Josh's dad, OJ Simpson and Sam Waterston and together they are the astronauts. And they're told by Dr. James Kellaway, who's being played by Hal Holbrook, that the flight was unsafe and he's just saved their lives and he's pulled them out from a fa uh, fated mission. And they're then forced to make a fake landing and additional footage or NASA's going to lose their funding. And all this is done in a TV studio that's already set up. And one of the technicians in ground control notices a discrepancy and he tells a journalist and then he disappears from the face of the planet and is replaced. The journalist is Robert Caulfield, he's being played by Elliot Gould, fantastic. And later when the rocket doesn't make it back, the astronauts realise that their lives are expendable. It also stars Telly Savannis as Albion, he's a pilot Caulfield hires to look for the astronauts in the desert, as well as David Huddersfield, play, he plays Santa in the Santa Claus eight years later, and David Doyle as Caulfield's boss, he was Bosley in the TV show Charlie's Angels. This must have been done because of the fake, or theories of the fake moon landing, they weren't fake. This is worth checking out. It's an absolute gem of a film. It's got a runtime this of two hours, three minutes. Let's take a look inside. So one of the images from the front cover has been put onto the disc. So that was Capricorn One. I highly recommend this film. It was absolutely brilliant. Next and last is a neo-noir thriller from 1985 called Jagged Edge. This is directed by Richard Marquand, who made Return of the Jedi two years earlier. And this stars Glenn Close and Jeff Bridges as lawyer and client and soon-to-be lovers. And that happens a little bit later in the film. Now, Jeff is playing Jack Forrester. He's a man accused of killing his wife with a jagged knife, hence the title. And Glenn is playing Teddy Barnes, a lawyer hired to defend him. And together, they go up against a district attorney called Thomas Cranzi, who's being played by Peter Coyote. Now, he's an amazing actor. You've just seen him in a lot of films over the years. He was that helpful government agent in E.T., Captain Barnes in Spear, Bill Davis in Patch Adams, Reverend Sullivan in A Walk to Remember, and many, many others. Great actor. Now, at first, Teddy believes Jack, and she defends him with all she's got, but after a material witness is called, she starts to question whether or not he is guilty, which is complicated further by the fact that they're now sleeping together. It also stars Lance Hendrickson from Alien, which was made the year after, and Michael Dorn from Star Trek Next Generation, made two years before he became Mr. Worf. It's got a runtime this of 109 minutes. Let's take a look inside. The front cover image has been carried onto the disc. And on the reverse of the cover, they are advertising other titles that are available. So that was Jagged Edge. So thank you to Paul for sending me the Black Demon. I really do appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. So that was it. Have you seen any of those or plan to pick them up or want to leave a comment and do so down below? I will read every single one and try to reply if I have the time. Give the video a thumbs up. It really does help the channel. And subscribe if you haven't. It's all free. Why wouldn't you? 
And on that note, all I have to say is thank you so much for choosing my channel today and watching my video. Take care. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.